Hi guys, it's New Year's Eve 2020, almost 2021, and a fellow collector passed away today. Um, if you're a Golden Age collector, you know who Lamont Larson was. He put together one of the greatest Golden Age pedigrees in the hobby. If you're not a Golden Age comic collector, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Lamont. He was born in 1927 in Wausau, Nebraska. And he enjoyed comic strips uh, when he was very young. And then when he was seven, comic books appeared on the scene. The first distributed newsstand comics were in 1934. The earliest comics from his collection, uh, there were just a couple from 1935. But in 1936, he went full throttle and was buying pretty much everything that was put out. Uh, somewhere along the line, we think maybe in 1939, the owner of the drugstore where Lamont bought his comics said, Hey Lamont, <laughs> you're buying everything anyway. If it's convenient for you, why don't we pull your books, pull one copy of each comic that comes in. We'll write your name on it. And uh, you can come in whenever you like periodically and pick up the stack that we've set aside for you. So Lamont was probably one of the first collectors to actually have a pull list <laughs> at his local shop, which was the local drugstore. Um, so that went on uh, for five years, Lamont bought comics from uh, those few issues in 1935 until late 1941. He bought just over a thousand comic books. Now, I called him a comic collector when John Burke, who's a famous comic collector, contacted Lamont in the 90s. Lamont said, no, 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 I was not a collector. I was a reader. I appreciated them, I enjoyed them, but I wasn't a collector. I'm not sure if that's true. Lamont liked to keep his things in nice shape, so he would read them and place them in a nice box and set them aside. Uh, he did give some to friends, and some of those copies have actually been located by John Burke. Uh, at least one friend sold John Burke uh, some more Larson books that weren't discovered until the 1990s. So over a thousand books in a five-year period. Those books included Action Comics number one, Superman number one, Marvel Mystery Comics number one, All American Comics number 16 with the first Green Lantern, and many others. His books tended to be very fine to near mint or better. Um, when they moved in 1940, the comics were put into a barn and so they were uh, subject to moisture there, and a uh, few of the books uh, got some rat chews on them in the barn as well. And they stayed there for a long time, from 1940 until the late 1970s, when Lamont's mom decided she wanted to clear out that barn, and she sold the comics to a local antique dealer. He only had them for about 18 months and uh, sold them again. Eventually they landed in the hands of a comic dealer, and that's when they were really brought to the comics community um, and were instantly recognizable for Lamont or Larson written in scribe on the usually the top one third left, I'm sorry, the top left third of the cover. Normally it was Larson. Sometimes it said Lamont. Sometimes you have books that don't say either one, they'll have either a, a number. Uh, some of them have a distribution code that say ON for Omaha News or PN for Publisher News. Um, but they are comics that today are highly valued um, in the comics community, in the Golden Age community. It's considered one of the top pedigrees. Uh, I've owned several Larsons over the years. Um, John Burke uh, is probably known as the biggest Larson collector and he was collecting them decades ago and he recognized the value of them because Lamont bought books that are not found in many other pedigree collections, many pre-hero books that don't even appear in the Edgar Church Mile High collection. And so he wanted to know who this Larson person was, who was Lamont Larson. And it wasn't until the 90s when he came upon a book that had a coupon on it Luckily, it wasn't a cutout coupon because Lamont did cut out some coupons <laughs> out of his books, um, but it had an address. And so um, John Burke was able to track down 
Lamont Larson in the 90s and have a phone conversation with him and uh, learned a great deal about how Lamont bought the books at that local drugstore, uh, whether or not he had written his name on them or was it the drugstore employees? Turns out it was the drugstore employees had written that, not Lamont, and answered a lot of questions about that collection. And Lamont was shocked uh, to be contacted about this issue. He'd kind of forgotten about his comics. It was something that he had set aside at the age of, I think, 14 and hadn't really thought about that much. Uh, since then. But John wrote an article about it and that was picked up by Lamont's local newspaper. And, and then in 2005, um, I've always been very active on the CGC message boards. Lamont's daughter Luann popped up one day and said, hey, I'm Lamont Larson's daughter. And I started corresponding with her, just sending emails back and forth and uh, learning a little bit more about her dad and the collection. And um, I remember the San Diego Convention was coming up and I said to Luann, you know what, it would be so awesome if we could get your dad to come to San Diego Comic-Con. That uh, CGC holds a dinner every year, they did at that time, where collectors come together one evening at the convention. I said, if we could get your dad at that dinner, that would be wonderful for collectors and I think your dad would really enjoy it. And it was, <laughs> it was shocking, she said to me, you know what, you're not gonna believe this, but my sister lives in San Diego and we're gonna be there on that date. We'll be in San Diego. So <laughs> I contacted Steve Borak, who at that time was at CGC, told him the situation, and he agreed to sponsor the family, the Larson family at the CGC dinner in San Diego, uh, 2005. And it was an extremely special night uh, I got there very early. The Larsons were already there. Some collectors were there. Uh, Mark Haspel, who worked for CGC at the time, had brought some Larson comics to show Lamont, these were your books. And he actually, by the end of the night, had decided to give Lamont one of his comics back. And Steve said, hey, why don't we, why don't we slab it as a signature series? <laughs> So uh, Lamont Larson owns the one and only Lamont Larson Signature Series book, which I think is pretty awesome. But it was a beautiful night. Um, there were maybe a hundred people there, something like that. And Luann asked me to sit with the Larson, so I sat right, right next to Lamont for the evening. And it was very touching to see throughout the night, collectors would approach the table get down on one knee next to Lamont, because it was loud, it was a lot of, you know, it was a party, and just express to him how much they appreciated his collection and how much they treasured, sorry. <laughs> Those books. And Lamont was like, uh, he was just one of us. Just an average guy who enjoyed the high adventure of comics and then came to an age where he decided to move on to uh, mystery novels and uh, model airplanes. He loved aviation. So that was uh, that was what he moved on to. So <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, wow, this is hard. He was a great guy. His collection will live on forever. And I'm glad I had one night sitting next to an old time collector Anyway, <clears throat> I thought you guys would want to know, and uh, hearts and prayers to his family. Uh, he was 93 when he passed away. He um, uh, was diagnosed with COVID the day after Thanksgiving, spent three weeks in the COVID ward, 
and uh, was able to return to his room at his senior living facility for about a week and uh, today about noon. Not sure why I'm so emotional. <laughs> but anyway, best to the family and uh, thanks Lamont. <laughs>